everyone, I'm John Evans. Welcome to another episode of One on One. We're talking Kukaloris this week. It's defined as a device used in photography for casting shadows or silhouettes and producing patterned illumination. The Kukaloris Festival in Wilmington has illuminated films and filmmakers now for almost a quarter of a century. And Dan Brawley has led that effort for the past 17 years. Born and raised in Wilmington, he came back to the city after college, and he's watched and helped Kukaloris grow in stature, not just in Wilmington, but all around the world. The very first year was 16 films from North Carolina, mm -hmm. but it was pretty quick. The acceleration was pretty quick. Brent Watkins and Christy Bird and Bo Webb and Jungle and a bunch of other people had really invested a lot of time in Kukaloris when I started to weave myself into it. So we were already showing international films when I sort of emerged as the head of Kukaloris. Um, and then it's just been, you know, accelerated growth from there. We, we've, we really um, embraced our identity as an international festival. We have strong ties to Scotland and Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's a really important part of the fabric of Kukaloris. But when was that first whoa moment? You know, it had to be somewhere around 2006 or 2007 when we were having these events on the Riverfront Park, and I can remember sort of standing on the federal courthouse steps and looking around, and there's a guy from Italy, and there's, you know, three guys from Spain who'd never been to the United States before, mm -hmm. you know, and you're driving these people around Wilmington, and they see Carolina Apartments at Fifth and Market. I'm like, well, that looks familiar. Why? What? You know, and they discover that Blue Velvet was made in Wilmington. And so somewhere in the, you know, uh, early... To 2005 to 2007, that, that range when we kind of um, established ourselves at Jingo's Playhouse. So we mm -hmm. had a year-round like headquarters, right. kind of clubhouse, um, and we started to bring more filmmakers in from overseas. That it was like, okay, this is a this is becoming something a little bit larger than the than the roots that we had in North Carolina as a regional event, and and, and we've embraced that. Yeah, and it's a, you know I think. Um, continue to be an important part of what we do is introduce artists to not just to Wilmington, but to the United States. A lot of them are coming to the United States for the first time. And, and you know, along the way, I mean, I, I wrote some, did a little bit of research. You know, year four, Nick Searcy yeah. debuts a film. Year eight, Jodie Foster's produced film is here, The Dangerous Lives of Alter Boys. You know, year 12, you move to November. Year 13, you have two films, Taxi to the Dark Side, went on to win an Academy Award. Yeah. Freehound went on to win Best Documentary. I mean, so there have been kind of steps along the way of, of Kukaloris just kind of flexing its muscles and growing and growing, haven't there? There have. Downtown Wilmington has been like our little laboratory. You know, this is an experiment in many ways, and we continue to tweak the recipe um, and this year, the 23rd year, will probably be the biggest shift we've had in the whole history of the, of the festival. Um, we have, for 22 years, you've loved the Kukaloris Film Festival. And we're relaunching it as the Kukaloris Festival with three branches, Kukaloris Film, obviously, mm -hmm. all of the documentaries that you love and the short films and the filmmakers' lounge and the parties, right. but also Kukaloris Stage, which kind of brings together some of our existing programs, the dance uh, that we do at Kukaloris, mm -hmm. the music videos, the performances, the comedy, which we added last year. And so stage is anything on the stage, you know? Right. And then the catalyst for this change really is Kukaloris Connect, right. our, our entrepreneurship conference that uh, we announced recently. Tom Looney is the president of that conference this year, and he's created a fascinating framework that we think is really going to um, create a powerful conversation about the future of Wilmington and how Wilmington fits into the connected digital economy, you know, which is what Corning is a great example of the industrial side of that. You know, sure. They make literally the physical material that is, the fiber, right, is yeah. connecting the world. Sure, yeah. And so we think Wilmington plays an interesting role um, as a small city in the global transformation of the digital economy. So I mean, it, it's important to you. I remember the first time I met you, it was, it was up at the studios when we were doing one of the, uh, one of the screening parties. Yeah, yeah. And, and we had a discussion, and 
you you told me at that point in time that you didn't want it to continue to be itself year after year, I think is the <laughs> word you used, that you wanted to continue to grow Kukalors and evolve Kukalors. And I think that's important because even, let's use the film genre, even a sequel may have to go different ways in different places. Yeah, yeah, right. You have to have new characters come onto sure. the show. And we have always thought that we would be better not mimicking ourselves. And I think a lot... in there's a certain part of our world where that is encouraged, right? Mm -hmm. In a corporate culture, you figure out your brand and then you deliver it again and again and you become reliable. And we have always sort of pushed ourselves to be in a place where failure seems like even a possibility, and, and which means ex trying new things, reinventing Google Oris every once in a while mm -hmm. so that it doesn't become predictable. Right. And, and um, th there's a little bit of like a 20th century thing in the art world where, and the greatest artists of the 20th century did this so well, Picasso was so great at making Picassos. You know, he could duplicate his own work, right? Sure. Which is what he did. And so yeah. we want to continue to reinvent Kukaloris. And so this year, is the 23rd year, is the most exciting one. Um, yeah. We're going to have, you know, an extended program of workshops about cocktails. We're going to have an entire day full of virtual reality. Um, there's a great music lineup in the works. Uh, some bigger shows at the Blue Eyed Muse. And so expanding the umbrella of Kukaloris and just seeing where that goes. We think that also reflects downtown Wilmington. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, let's face it. Uh, let's take the news business. We're in the news station now. You know, 20 years ago, we're delivering a newscast a different way. Yeah, right. You know, 20 years ago, I wouldn't have never thought that, why am I going to tell somebody to go to uh, our website for? You know, or why are we doing a digital this for, you know, a, a podcast uh, what, or what is a podcast? Yeah. <laughs> so we have to com continue to develop in new ways. And, and you're doing the same thing as far as bringing not only the, the film, but giving these filmmakers new opportunities. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And heck, maybe we need to do a a panel about the transformation of media and, and where, where, you know, how did a podcast become part of a TV station's media lineup? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's fascinating, you know, yeah. and everybody's, no matter, doesn't matter what business you're in, right? Even yeah. in traditional businesses, you're, we're seeing that kind of a digital transformation. There'll be several events at Connect this year about um, the marine ecosystem and about uh, sustainable ways to uh, capitalize on all the opportunities. Oyster farming, um, has been a really big boom in Virginia, and we're looking at ways to kind of mimic that here in southeastern North Carolina. There's a lot of beautiful uh, marshland that could be growing oysters. Um, yeah, so, so all sorts of different industries that you might not think of when you think mm -hmm. of a tech conference or you think of a film festival that you'll get to, um, you know, explore a little bit at Google Loris. So when Dan Brawley was growing up in Wilmington, North Carolina, did he want to be a filmmaker? Did he want to be? <laughs> did he want to be a businessman? What did Dan Brawley want to do as a teenager or as a as a child in Wilmington? Well, you know, a lot of people might know this already, but I spent most of my childhood playing golf. I went to Duke University on a golf scholarship, mm -hmm. and probably thought I would have spent my whole life playing golf. Um, and then I just decided, you know, I, I played a lot of golf and decided to want to do other things. I don't know that I ever really thought about what I wanted to be in terms of a filmmaker or a business person. Um, I think of myself primarily as an artist. I think of Kukaloris as, as an extension of my artistic practice. Mm -hmm. You know, so my media just happens to be other artists and audience members and community leaders. And, and so um, it's a, uh, I love it, absolutely love it. I, you know, I, I'm surprised at my own, t how long I've been here sometimes. That, oh, wow, I've been working for Google Wars for 16, 17, or 18 years, and that seems like a long time, but I'm just as excited about Google Wars 23 as I am Google Wars 24, and think that with the number of hotel rooms in downtown Wilmington yeah. and the new venues downtown, Google Wars could double or triple in size in the next five to 10 years. Yeah, and, and along the way, you guys have uh, uh, taken chances, you've, yeah. you've tried new things. Um, and what have you learned along the way about Kukaloris? Because a lot of people say, I mean, you know, one of the 25 coolest film festivals in the world by Movie Maker, or, you know, one of the 10 best film festivals you've never heard of is another one you said. Yeah. So what have you learned about Kukaloris' place in the world of thousands of film festivals? Well, we've um, had the luxury of having downtown Wilmington as a laboratory, and even just the greater Wilmington area. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got three incredible features, the river, our historic downtown, and the ocean. 
And so when we bring people to town, it's a really special experience. So we're creating a temporary community for five days. Um, and so in, I think of it a lot as a reflection of Wilmington, as a reflection of the strengths of Wilmington's current makeup. And then what we hope is that by bringing all these brilliant people to Wilmington, North Carolina, whether they be filmmakers or entrepreneurs or venture capitalists, that we will help to shape the future of Wilmington. And I think Connect especially has that opportunity to introduce to the rest of the world the incredible quality of this community. There are very few places where I, I joke with people that I can go from my keyboard to my surfboard in about 25 minutes. Sure. And that's literally from sitting at my desk, set my timer, I get on the parkway, I get straight to rights, so we'll go to the south end, and I can be out, I can be in the water in 25 minutes. That's amazing. Yeah. There's not very many places where you can be in a beautiful historic downtown environment and then 25 minutes later be on one of the best beaches in the world. And so um, we think as, as we introduce really visionary and talented people to Wilmington that more and more of them will move here and discover what we all know is that it is a great place to work and live. Take us through, if you can, the interstate of Kukalors. And I say that because, you know, you've had some of these, some of these big things. And as you're going through, are you taking notice in year eight, in year 10, that wow, we got the film here, Jodie Foster's name is on this package. <laughs> or, you know, we got a couple that are up for Academy Awards, and then that night they win. You know, those have got to be markings in, in, in the interstate that is Kukaloris for you. Yeah, there are. You know, there are pivotal moments that, that transformed the festival. Um, and we never know quite what they're going to be. You know, you know Jodie Foster is a big deal. But what we're most excited about is the discoveries, right? It's what you find out three years later that the young kid from Fuquay Varina who met a director from Chicago on Front Street is now a Versace underwear model. Yeah. Right? Which is not which is a true story. Sure. Young guy met a filmmaker who had come to Chicago from Chicago who was also a casting agent who was casting for a Versace underwear show. And all of a sudden this kid from Fuquay Varina is in Paris on the runway. And so to me, those are the special things that happen. Yeah. And where the greatest potential is at Kukaloris is that you're bringing together people who um, are, you know, able to um, function on many different levels. Like filmmakers have to be able to be creative, but they also have to be very organized. They have to be good with people. They have to be artistically and aesthetically really, you know, strong. And so um, something special happens when you bring those kinds of people together. And adding theater and comedy and entrepreneurs and startups, we think, creates kind of an explosive opportunity for new businesses. Um, and we're just at the very beginning of that. You yeah. know? Um, we're still figuring out that recipe of how to incorporate filmmaking and entrepreneurship and how to weave all that together so that we have the greatest outcome. You know, you think of, I, I, I've talked to my, about it myself as an artist, and you think of a painter, right, who gets to do a bunch of paintings every year. You get to do, I don't know, a bunch, 35, sure. 50, yeah. 100, whatever. Right. I get to do one a year. So it takes a long time to develop some of that. And that's what we've told a lot of the stakeholders in Connect is that give us a few years to really get this recipe right. Because, um, you know, it's um, complicated. We host 200 events over five days. Yeah. And so we're perfecting that all the time. Um, yeah, who knows? This November will be, I think, the, the, one of the most exciting, and um, we, we are putting together an incredible lineup. Um, it, we're using Daniels Hall at Union Station for Connect events. Mm -hmm. Google our stage events will be all over town at North Front Theater, at the Blue Eyed Muse, at, at a lot of the best um, stage venues. What was the genesis for Kukalor's Connect? I mean, I know we've done stories on it when the whole thing launched, and, 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 but where, where did the genesis for that come up? I mean, uh, you are uh, uh, you know, wanted to be a filmmaker, so you obviously know what some of these young men and women go through. How did this all come about? Well, you know, Connect happened different from the film festival. The film festival was an organic expression of a decade of the film industry in Wilmington. There was, a, there was a, a, an environment that was really supportive for young independent filmmakers, and so there were a lot of them here in the early 90s. And that's what Twinkle Dune sort of grew out of that culture. And it's a little bit different where we are with Connect. People from the community, different parts of the community, uncoordinated, were coming to me with the same idea that, hey, we really think that Wilmington is, a, is, is ripe for an, 
a conference about entrepreneurship. And so through a series of events, um, Brett Martin, the founder yeah. of Castle Branch, and I sure. went to South by Southwest one year. Um, Susie Hamilton and Jim Roberts went with us. We had a great time. We talked about, you know, the fact that Wilmington was really ready for a, for a tech conference. Um, people at the CIE um, were also really eager to explore what we might be able to do. Um, and so the first year we did 10 by 10. We matched 10 filmmakers and 10 entrepreneurs, gave them five days to make a music video, I mean, make a promo video. And some of the folks on the entrepreneur side, they were like, well, we might have to call it five by five. I don't know if we'll find 10 people. And of course we had 25 applications yeah, the first I was gonna year. Yeah, so you had plenty to choose from. Yeah, they, everybody wanted some video content. And that's the beauty of it is it doesn't matter what you're selling, you need some video yeah. on your In website. this day and age, you can put it anywhere you want to and then have somebody pick it up. Yeah, tell your story. Sure. And so um, we helped all those startups tell their story and it worked out really well. It was a lot of fun. Um, it introduced to the startup community, to the business community, the value of hiring creatives and, and, and how much fun that can be, but also how beneficial it can be to your, to your company. And it gave the startups a nice video that mm -hmm. they could use. You know? sure. um, so that encouraged us to really do it, to, to turn Coastal Connect, which was the CIA's event, into Kukaloris Connect. And Laura Brogdon and I, who works at the CIE, we're sitting in the backyard of Jingo's and like, let's just do this. You know, like we, I think probably my, my, my legacy is I, I probably asked for forgiveness later more than asking for permission because there are probably a lot of people who, you know, but we just said, let's, we can just do this. Let's just do and I think we, the first year we had four months to plan it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just had no time. It, yeah. it was like, we, we have to do it. We have to start. Right. Let's take a step. Somebody's got to take that first step. Why not me? Yeah. And so we did it. We had some incredible speakers that first year, you know, it was a great lineup. Um, and now the third year really feels like we it's it's a it's we've fully baked this thing, and we're ready to to introduce it to the world. Um, we've been given a grant from the state government to market Connect, so that's really going to help us spread the word about Connect. And with Tom Looney's leadership and vision, we're attracting some great speakers. You know. So uh, so for the for the 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 person who's not following it, this isn't just a film thing. This is an an industry. All the way around, right? That's right. So this year's Connect Conference will be look at the connected digital economy and through three different tracks, digital industrial, which is a term I believe that GE coined years ago um, to kind of describe that part of the digital uh, mm -hmm. economy, digital enterprise, so like software as a service, and, 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 and then um, the third track is digital consumer, so wearables and, and the Internet of Things, that kind of stuff. Um, and so we'll have um, speakers and panels and workshops in each of those different tracks, and then we'll have four keynotes, um, and we're we're not we're almost there to announce a few of them, but not quite yet. But I think people in Wilmington will be really excited to hear who's coming to Wilmington um, and the kinds of things they're talking about. I know we'll have at least one keynote that'll look at the transition from um, packaged goods to cloud-based. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, several different companies, and we're not sure which one's going to provide the case study. Mm -hmm. But a case study looking at how does a company go from, you know, warehoused goods to providing their products on the cloud. And, and that is happening in a number of different ways across the economy, right? And so there's a, there might not need to be a need for a huge warehouse space anymore, right? We don't need a bunch of DVDs anymore. Sure. People just all download it or use it as a, as a web-based service. And so I think that's fascinating. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, I mean, it's limitless, too. It, you know, it, you really, it really is. I mean, you would just build a, another server, add another server, and you got you know, the same thing as five or six warehouses of storage. That's right. Yeah, so Connect is not um, filmmaker-focused. It's really entrepreneurship-focused, and it's meant to bring together young um, business leaders, emerging companies, startups, and then the leaders from our community and from other communities who have really helped shape the digital transformation. Yeah, uh, but on the film side of Kukalores, you get... 2,000, 2,100 submissions a year. How do you whittle it down? Do you literally <laughs> sit in a room and, and, and watch all of these things? We have about 50 programmers who watch films and score them. So every film gets, is seen at least twice. And then a smaller group of people who look at all the high-scoring films. And it's, I, I tell people it's kind of like going to the grocery store. Because people think what we do is pick the best films. Now, when you go to the grocery store, you don't go in and just go, I'm just going to get the best stuff here, and then I'm going home. And then everybody else who comes after you is just not going to get the best stuff? No. 
you go, you know, you, you go and you have a list of things that you want to feed yourself for the week. You might get something sweet. You might get some, you know, snacks. You might mm -hmm. get some fruits and vegetables. But it's a mixture of different things that's sort of representative of what you like that's in the grocery store. But when you leave, I'm going to go in and I'm going to get some stuff that I like. And so it's very, I guess what I, I say that to illustrate that it's very subjective. And we're really trying to create a schedule of films that invites the entire community in. So some films for kids, some horror movies late at night that you shouldn't bring your kids to, you know, um, some documentaries for people who are inter really interested in community issues and community organizing. Um, and it's a fascinating process. You discover things along the way. Um, you couldn't watch them all. We did a, we calculated one time, if you tried to watch every entry, so just over 2,100 this year, it would take about four and a half months without sleeping, <laughs> without stopping. <laughs> And you, and I think I, I I mean there's a list of people that I've that, that I've met in my life who I think have in uh, you know invented that 25th hour. You're on that <laughs> list, but even with the 25th hour, it would still take you about two months, that's, two and a half that's months right. anyway, take me right? Three months. Uh, yeah. I mean, I still watch a lot of movies. I watch about 500 films every year. Is that fun to you? That whittling down process, or because you know that these filmmakers who aren't chosen may be disappointed and may not have any other place to go. So what's that process like for you? I love it. I mean, that's why I'm still doing it. It's the core of what I enjoy is discovering new voices and new talent in film or, or theater or comedy or music. Um, and so you, the, one of the things that happens along the way, you know, I watch 500 films a year, you discover trends that are happening around the world that you didn't realize, right? You're know, like, I don't know, just... Like, all of a sudden, there's banana bread in everybody's movie. What's going on? Why Banana bread's really popular. <laughs> and so before they hit the mainstream, you discover these trends that are percolating at the really the ground level of our cultural production, mm -hmm. of the people who are shaping our society. And that's fun, right? Yeah. It's really fun. They might not get into the festival even, but they might influence the way I see the world. Um, or it might be that I'm curating another program and I remember a certain filmmaker. So, you know... It's an important message for filmmakers is don't be, um, you know, too down on yourself when you don't get into festivals. Mm -hmm. Every every filmmaker who participates influences what happens. Did you? Uh, when's the first time you got that circle back from a filmmaker who was in Kukalors? Gosh, it happens every day almost, you know. Or, but I mean, when about the first time, you know, year five, six, when you when you're starting to take, when you got that note or card or email saying I was in your festival last year and blank has happened to me since. Listen, we still get, um, I, I emailed a guy yesterday who was at Kukalors in 2001, um, who we, who, you know, stayed in touch with, but, um, yeah, so that, that circle just continues to swirl and swirl and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. The community of Kukalors alumni across the planet is fascinating. I can't go to a city anywhere in the world where I don't have a friend because we've screened a film by a filmmaker in all those places and they remember fondly their time in Wilmington. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I go to London or Edinburgh or, um, you know, just about any trip that I take, Toronto or LA or New York or Miami, there's always a good crew of people there that I can reach out to and, you know, um, keep that sort of going. There's a, there's a group of filmmakers in New York who meet up a Kukaloris alumni group. Oh, really? <laughs> Once a month in a, in a, you know, in a bar in Brooklyn, uh, there's about 15 filmmakers that get together because they met each other at Kukaloris. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. That you're having that kind of an impact, you know, down the line. Gotta, that gotta be, <laughs> make you smile. It feels, feels pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Um, was there a first time for you that one of the films hit you more than you thought it might? Gosh, I, I'll say one that I remember in particular is a film called Tarnation by Jonathan Cowett. And I still have the VHS tape, so that tells you it wasn't all that recent. Um, just an incredible portrait of it. One of the first generations of kids who had a VHS camcorder and so filmed himself all the time with no plan, obviously, when he was in his 20s to make a feature film. But then when he was in his 20s and became a filmmaker, he had all this footage of his childhood. And... Um, yeah, Tarnation, if anybody, you know, it's an incredible documentary about uh, growing up abused and, and, and the child of someone who was abused. Um, wow. And, but told in a lyrical and poetic way that's, in, you know, uh, as challenging, challenging as it is, is uh, uplifting in some ways. How important is, is it to you 
to stay true to North Carolina filmmaking, too? Because I know you set a limit every year or an amount every year that you want North Carolina filmmakers to be a part of this. Yeah, we have a formula now with the film festival. I mean, after 22 years, we figured out some of the things, how to do some of the things. And one of them is a, is a pretty a formula that we tweak, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there's, a, I think, 35% of all the films at the festival are from North Carolina. 50% of all the films are directed or produced by women. So we, we um, have slowly over the years, we'll test something out, and then after the festival we'll get together and talk about, hey, how did that change the, you know, the community of people that came together? And so um, having a strong connection to North Carolina filmmaking is important. And we're very active in advocating for the industry in North Carolina. So I spent a lot of time in Raleigh. We're getting ready to publish a survey for key people in the industry to find out if there are some ways we can increase communication across the state with the stakeholders in the film industry, and if there are some things we can do in the absence of, an, of, a, of a bolstered incentive, what are the smaller things that we can do to let people know that we're still in business and that we still are a great place to make movies? Um, mistake that you learned from the most along the way? Gosh, um, you know, we've made some mistakes. We make a lot of mistakes. I mean, Kukaloris is a, a learning institution. Well, I mean, but anybody anybody who's trying something new can't be afraid to make a mistake. That's exactly right. And so, but I, I, I mean, I'd like to know one that you made that you learned from along the way that, you know, you might don't mind sharing. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest mistake we make, and we still make it, is we don't give ourselves enough time. And so we've always been, you know, we're, Kukaloris is incredibly ambitious. We always plan a little more than we can chew off which I'm happy about. And so through that process, you learn. One of the gifts we have is that at the festival only lasts five days. And so we can take those risks. Whereas if you run a business that has to be open 365 days a year, you probably can't take some of the risks that we take. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, I don't know, you know a, a, an example is that for a long time we sent the comments about all the films back to the filmmakers. And a couple of them published our comments on their websites. You know, That probably wasn't a real good idea for us. Um, but we're proud of those failures, you know, um, and so come out and watch us fail a little bit. But really, um, really what we do is we create a platform for other people to experiment and take risks. That's And that's the thing. And, and, and you know, in the time that I've been in TV news, and I'm going to take a right turn here off this exit, is that. You know, it's good to see the young reporters we have come into this market try things, try different kind of stand-ups or try different kind of ways they shoot interviews. It's good. It may not work, yeah. but it's good for them to try. And I've always gotten the sense that Kuka Loris has always been willing to kind of prop somebody up, dust them off on the backside <laughs> and say, you tried. And, yeah. thanks for, and thanks for even trying. Well, we, I mean... The Kukulors is a learning institution, so so it's disguised as a film festival and, a, and an entrepreneurship conference, really. Yeah. Um, all the people that work for us, the majority of them are recent graduates from UNCW or Cape Fear Community College or one of the other you know institutions in our region. They um, aren't qualified to get jobs at other places, right? They just they're not qualified to be the communications director, you know, at another business in Wilmington. But hey, our situation is that we are going to hire you. You're going to work for us for four or five months. You're gonna, we're going to throw you in the deep end of the pool, and we're going to scream at you to swim, and you'll figure it out, right? And then at the end of November, you're off to, you know, you've learned a little bit, but, you know, like, so, um, and it's true for filmmakers, too. So, so all the seasonal staff, we hire about 30 people seasonally, and they learn, um, you know, they learn important uh, lessons for the hospitality industry, the marketing industry. You know, it's, a, it's not just event planning, which oh, is yeah. I think what people think, but it's a bunch of different industries where you earn some, some street cred and some hands-on skills that would then propel you into your next job. And a lot of those folks meet their next employer at Kukaloris because it's a hyper-socialized environment. You know, um, <laughs> to say the least. I mean, you know, it's like you, you're just you're surrounded by a bunch of really outgoing people for yeah. five days, and you're going to get to know some people. And people uh, who aren't, who, who have already put their 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 biggest fears, their their inner thoughts on film. That's right. For everybody to see, so they're not shy in any way, shape, or form. That's exactly right. Well, and I fell in love with film festivals in Scotland when I was in my early twenties. Worked at the Edinburgh Film Festival and discovered that you could go see a movie at nine a.m which I found amazing. I didn't fall asleep. I, you'd have a cup of coffee while you watch a movie. Um, and then afterwards, you have something to talk about, right? So, you know, 
for some of us creative types who would prefer to be, you know, in our workshops or behind a canvas or a computer or whatever, uh, those hypersocial situations are, you know, intimidating. And I just found out that, man, film festivals, you've already got something to talk about. You just watch this powerful film um, and therefore you're like, boom, the conversations are happening naturally and organically because you have had an experience together. You've had some tributes along the way. Dino De Laurentiis was one, and, and, and for anybody who doesn't know the name De Laurentiis in Wilmington Film, Google it and then prepare to spend about the next eight or nine hours uh, as far as what the family has done, him starting it and what the family has done. There's a great book about him that tells about his whole life starting in Italy and yeah. the studio built in Italy and then his move to the United States. Fascinating life. But Joe Dunton. Well, that was last. last yeah. We did yeah. Joe. And, Joe, yeah, and last year. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. you know. You want to talk about a visionary person who's uh, transformed Wilmington. You know, Joe Dunton is a legend in the in the camera world and the film world. And so um, Stanley Kubrick's daughter came right. to join us in honoring Joe. Um, Garrett Brown, the founder of the Steadicam, came. I mean, it was a it was a camera and tech heads <laughs> dream. You know, like here are these folks on stage. How do you, how do you decide when you want to do one of those tributes? You know, and they don't happen every year. We do no, them. they don't, and, and yeah. I've noticed that, and that's why they're not just you know window dressing to the festival. They, there's always some sort of spark. Uh, we're looking at maybe, I'll tease this out there, doing something for the 25th anniversary of Dawson's Creek, which I believe is next year, mm -hmm. um, which was uh, created by a guy from North Carolina, the original story yeah. and, and write, writing. So we might do something around that, which I think a lot of people would be like, well, Kuka Loris and Dawson's Creek, they don't go together. And it's like, yeah, they do, man. They go together so well. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they were one of our biggest sponsors in the early years. If you look at what Michelle Williams has done, wow, she's yeah. the most exciting actress um, working today. We Wilmington ought to be really saying we were part of the beginning of Michelle Williams' career, um, the same way we ought to celebrate Blue Velvet and some of these other things. And so... Mm. Um, maximum that, Overdrive for those of us who love the cult film Maximum Overdrive we should just do a Stephen King thing right oh, yeah, yeah. All, the fact that all of his early films were made here blows people's minds when yeah. I tell them in my travels and I say yeah all of Stephen King's early films were made in Wilmington they're like really and that's what they say they say Maximum Overdrive Cat's yeah. Eye whoa yeah. do I do drive out 74 76 yeah it's changed a little bit but it gives you an idea of just where that whole thing kind of was concocted. Yeah, one of those dreams that we've had for years, and a friend of mine, Steve Fox, has really been behind this, is can we create an app or a, kind of like a guided audio tour for visitors that would lead them around Wilmington to show off all the really cool production locations? Mm -hmm. You know, Empire Records um, happened in the in the space that's now Buzz's Roost. Now, what a great film, you know? Yeah. Uh, I would love to, like, take that building and turn it back into Empire Records and have, you know, that could be the the headquarters for the Wilmington film, you know, app. Uh, yeah. That would... You also, though, every year, because let's face it, I I'm coming at this, I I've done some research and I've been here as long as Kuka Loris has, but there's a lot of people who just like watching movies. So one of the things that you've done with Kuka Loris every year is that you have kind of ways for people who just want to watch movies to be able to do it based on their likes, Correct. Yeah. You've had tracks where people said, look, if you like this, go this way. If you like this, go this way. So you're not just setting people, here, buy a ticket now, figure out where you want to go. That's important, I would think, to anybody who just wants to enjoy the festival. Yeah, it's really important. I mean, at 200 events, it's awfully difficult to navigate. And um, so we have several programs in the film section. Magnolia are films that have won awards, and they might have actors or actresses that you'll recognize. So a little bit more mainstream, like the films mm -hmm. that play on the main stage at Thalian in the biggest venue. If you're a first-time film festival person, that's a great place to start. Um, our Vanguard program, our lower-budget films, um, the kind of thing when you think of indie film, yeah. you think of Vanguard. It's a little bit more challenging. Um, so if you're a little bit more adventurous, you know, check out some Vanguard films. Um, and some of the other tracks are a little more specialized. So voices are documentaries, mm -hmm. um, mostly about the South. So we've kind of refined that focus over the years. Yeah. That's something that we've done in response to how many film festivals there are now. And we've had to be even more specific in who we serve. And so we've started our documentary program really looks at trying to cultivate voices in the South. Um, so, yeah, so, so there, are, there are all these different programs that will help you kind of navigate your way through so that you don't have to just sort of blindly pick events. And our staff loves to help people through that discovery because um, you can't really, you can't read about all the films. It's over 300 films. Yeah. You can't read about it. It's just too much. And so 
those programs really help you um, find the door into Kukuloris, and then hopefully you're inspired and, and sort of once you're in the door, you can kind of explore a little bit. 2008, you joined Alternate Roots. Yeah, a pretty pivotal moment for me. Alternate Roots, um, a friend of mine, Ashley Sparks, who worked at Dreams years ago, um, had become a member of Alternate Roots and invited me to come, and I was on the executive committee on the board and was the chair of the board for many years. Um, Alternate Roots is a nonprofit that supports artists working for social justice. Mm -hmm. It was I spent seven years, I think, on their executive committee, and it was kind of like grad school for me. Grad school and community organizing and really pushed me to take a deeper look at racial politics, at gender, and a bunch of things that I, as a white male, I had, I don't have to think about if I don't want to, right? Right. And so, um, and that has really helped to kind of transform Kukuloris. I was going to ask you then, that, yeah. that's had an impact on the entire Kukuloris effort since yeah. then, hasn't it? And, fo and people who have been, who have, who have been part of Kukuloris as volunteers or filmmakers or staff members know that we have a very specific culture at Kukuloris. We have created a whole host of practices to try to encourage horizontal leadership versus vertical leadership. Most corporate structures would be vertical where, you know, you have a, a chain, Up and right? down the ladder, right. Well, we want people to walk in on day one and be able to influence and impact decision making. Um, it goes with that sort of learning environment um, of giving everybody an equal say. And so we have all these fun things that we do. Um, we've created a very specific culture. And I borrowed a lot of that from Alternate Roots. We also, um, a lot of that came from a consultant that we worked with for about six years from New York named Nello McDaniels in Arts Action Research. He specializes in nonprofits led by artists or by visionary creatives. And so it was a, and he, mostly he had been doing theater and so the kind of experimenting with the film festival was really fun for him. And he saw things that we were already doing and was like, oh, you need to write that down. It's like you guys have, have um, innovated a, a, a mechanism that can be used for tons of different organizations. Yeah. So, so a lot of our board members have even taken some of those practices. Um, the city of Wilmington has borrowed a few of our um, sort of organizational practices. There you go. Our Sage Island, who does our website, has borrowed a few things from our, our model. Um, and it's fun. It's fun. And we're always experimenting. That's the place where we've probably failed the most and experimented the most is behind the curtain. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's where we're sort of um, testing out different ways of organizing ourselves and um, – you know, we have, we, and a lot of it we try to have fun, right? We try to remind ourselves that we're, at the end of the day, Kukulors is supposed to um, throw a, a, good, a good festival. Yeah. And a bunch of people are supposed to have fun. 2017, president of the Film Festival Alliance. <laughs> So that's that's that sounds like a lot of work. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know what the subtext is, but it sounds uh, to me like a lot of work. Yes, it is. Um, at this year, at the Sundance Film Festival this year, um, there's a conference right before Sundance called the Art House Convergence. A lot of film festivals, um, art house cinemas, universities that have film programs come together for three days. And um, the Film Festival Alliance, which is a nonprofit, very young, just getting started, is a network of film festivals. And we're creating resources for film festivals. So if you're starting a festival in Minneapolis, we can give you a volunteer book so that you gotcha. don't have to start from scratch. We can also introduce you to different resources, you know, to help you get trying started. to birth Kukaloris and film festivals in places where there are none. A little bit, and trying yeah. to connect existing people you yeah. know, who may be isolated. Um, and it's, I mean, it's an industry now. I laughed around 2001 when someone said the film festival industry. I was like, "What do you, what do you mean? I don't, I make a hundred dollars a year, and I, I don't know what industry are you part of, <laughs> you know?" But now it really is an industry, and there, there oh, are yes. a bunch of service organizations that that um, work for film festivals. So the Film Festival Alliance is really the hub, and. Um, We'll be doing some advocacy work. Um, our members get lots of great benefits. They get a discount on passes to Sundance. Mm -hmm. They get um, free advertising on a couple of websites if you become a member festival. Um, and so an incredible honor for me. I was a bit shocked, um, to be honest, when you know I was invited to fill that role, elected. I was elected by, right. the, by the membership of, yeah. the, of the alliance. And so um, all the work I did at Alternate Roots, kind of the grad school experience, led straight to me, I think, having the right set of skills to help grow the Film Festival Alliance. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we're going to have a meeting in Wilmington in December, so we're going to bring the head of the Seattle Film Festival, the Hamptons Film Festival, the Woods Hole Film Festival, the Denver Film Society, the New Orleans Film wow. Festival. We'll all convene here in Wilmington at the Kukulors campus, you know, so um, 
in addition to it being an honor for me, I think we'll be able to showcase Wilmington um, to the leaders in the film festival industry, which will just help us uh, spread the word that this is a great place for um, filmmaking and business. Gonna, I'm going to ask you a similar question. I asked you before, when did you realize, when did you realize, but did you go someplace at one point in time and somebody said, he's the head of the Kukaloris Film Festival, or did you, when, when may have you realized that Kukaloris was starting to get known in the, in the national or international world as, you know, as a big deal? Well, we're, I'll, I'll mention two little things. I was at the Toronto Film Festival. I don't remember what year it was, sitting in a screening. And, you know, in Wilmington, a lot of people know me. In Toronto, it's a big city. Yeah, I, can, sure. I can just wander around and be anonymous. I'm sitting in a screening, not thinking, you know, too much. And somebody comes up to me and introduces themselves and said, I, you know, I know who you are. And I thought, wow, I'm in another country, yeah. in a theater where there are millions of people milling around this city and someone knows who I am. What, that is amazing. Um, and then, and, and Kukulors' reputation was really boosted by the founders. Christy Bird moved out to L.A. Mm -hmm. and started working for Slamdance, which happens during Sundance. So I had a really nice sort of um, in, in my very first moments as the head of Kukulors in Park City, Utah, where Sundance and Slamdance happened. So that was awfully nice. Yeah. It's awfully nice to be known at Slamdance, and we've had a great relationship with Slamdance over the years. Um, but now, as I said earlier, yeah. you know, when I go to, I, I'm living a, a little bit part time in Brooklyn these days. I spend, um, especially in the Kukulors off season, um, so I have a lot. Is of, there an off season? Well, um, not, <laughs> when you're screening 2,100 movies, I wouldn't think there's much of an off season. Not so much anymore, but, um, but you know, so so yeah. we have strong ties in a bunch of cities, Austin, Texas, tons of friends in Austin, Texas that have either been to Kukulors over the years or know about it. Um, and that's really rewarding. I, you know, uh, there isn't a lot of money in running a cultural nonprofit, you know, and so there have to be some other benefits. And yeah. one of the best benefits for me is that kind of respect in our industry and, and having a network of friends all around the world who take care of you and are happy to see you. Airbnbs wherever you want to go. Yeah, right. Exactly. There you go. Tell me about the wish coat. The wish coat that we did a few years ago. Well, we, our crowdfunding campaign, which we're getting ready to launch in a couple of days, um, we've done it six times successful all six years we're the uh, you know the leading film festival in the crowdfunding arena um and we always come up with something that's fun and easy to connect people right people want to people want their dollars to be meaningful you know like when i go to the gas station that's not meaningful right and boy do we go i go to the gas station all the time and just dump whatever it is yeah. you know forty dollars at a time and, and it's not meaningful to me so crowdfunding is one of the ways that people can attach meaning to their to their finances and so we do fun little things you know um the wish coat was great we we wrote down people's wishes and we used a safety pin and put them on a coat and a filmmaker the filmmaker who kind of sort of came up with this idea for the crowdfunding campaign wore the coat around at the festival and you could read all the wishes um one year you could adopt a worm we had some <laughs> resident artists who were creating a wormery and this year you can sponsor um a nap or a bark or a walk um, from our office dog, um, Isabella Rossellini. Her name's Izzy, but her full name's Isabella, Isabella right. Rossellini. Is our office dog, and so you can sponsor her daily activity um, <laughs> this year, and we'll send you a little video or a little picture of Izzy um, if you make a. And those are for people who make you know one, two, three dollar donations. Sure. Because um, we have lots of filmmakers who you know, they're they're um, not making tons of money, but boy, spiritually they're super connected to Google Loris. And so you match those with a few people locally who see how valuable an investment in Kukuloris is, and then you have a magic little thing. Surf a Loris, dance a Loris. What's next? <laughs> how do you keep? How do we keep track of all this stuff? Um, Surf a Loris is next. It's in September. Yeah. In the Outer Banks, uh, Rory Kennedy, I think, might come. Bobby Kennedy's daughter, who's a really talented filmmaker, she made a documentary about Laird Hamilton called "Take Every Wave," and we think she might come to the Outer Banks, which I. I don't get too star crazy, but boy, meeting Roy Kennedy would be pretty cool. Um, I don't know what's next. You know, this year's a big shift for us. And yeah. we just launched our new website. I encourage people to check it out, kukuloris.org. Yeah. And you'll see visually this sort of new, um, this new way to package Kukuloris. Mm -hmm. So it's the Kukuloris Festival with our three branches, Film, Stage, and Connect. Yeah. And you can explore each branch separately, you know, um, and so that's the, the newest thing. Um, Connect is really a place of 
exciting innovation. There'll be a wellness lounge this year. There'll probably be a couple of ping pong tables. Um, we've got key some, negotiating points. You right? know, right? Yeah, you got to have a little competition out there somewhere for people to let out that that energy. Um, we've got people coming from ESPN and Adobe. So uh, this is really the breakout year for Connect, and that's where I think the most exciting um, developments at Google Earth will happen at Connect Thursday and Friday during the festival at Daniels Hall um, at CFCC's Union Station building. Um, I can't wait to see what happens. You know, it feels like Kukuloris about year six or seven. So the development of Connect has been much faster, even though I'm sure some people are like, can't y'all get to it, you know, yeah. but, um, but it takes a while. But I feel like it has the same special energy of discovery and, who, and nobody knows quite what's going to happen mm -hmm. as we did in Kukuloris around year six or seven. It has some scale to it. That was one of the advantages of launching it inside of Kukuloris was that we had the infrastructure to build a, a little festival the first, second, third year that was bigger than you could kind of independently. Um, What's a movie that you see on TV, no matter where it is in the movie itself, that you'll watch the rest of it? Gosh, that's a really good question. Um, well, you know, as a as a child of the 80s, Star Wars and Caddyshack were probably the most memorable. And Grease, maybe? I remember we had a VHS copy of Grease that we just watched all the time. Um, my favorite film, though, is going to be one that no one's ever heard of called Vivan Las Antipodas. It's a it's an observational documentary about about antipodas, which are points on the planet that are the exact opposite from another point. And so there are a handful of cities, not many. Most cities, the opposite point is the ocean because the earth is mostly water. So, But there are about eight cities that are antipodas. And so if you drew a straight line through the city in China, you end up in the city in Argentina. Okay. And the film, this filmmaker went and did these observational portraits of people in those places. So there are two guys that sit beside a sand floating bridge in Argentina and wait all day for one truck to drive by. And their conversation is hilarious. And so you watch that and then you go straight to this bustling city in China where there are thousands of bikes going by. And it's, so it's this amazing sort of pairing of cities. Um, I love losing myself in visual imagery, and um, sometimes I don't always need a story. Mm -hmm. It's maybe because I've watched too many movies. But um, I thought I thought you'd say something like The Fifth Element, or I, th yeah. I thought you'd say something that was. I mean, and that sounds like a very intriguing. You know, if somebody was going to tell me I'm going to study the points opposite <laughs> of each other, that would intrigue me. But I, 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 that's interesting. What's the name of it again? Vivan las Antipodas. Okay. Um, yeah, so that might explain a little bit about the combination of Kugel, at Kugeloris of really funny stuff, right? Mm -hmm. the, the sort of off-the-wall humor of Caddyshack mixed with some like very serious, sort of slightly esoteric aesthetic sort of um, exercises. And I think that probably is a little bit of the flavor of Kugeloris, is, is, the, um, is a lot of laughing and also a lot of really serious stuff mixed together. And boy, that's a special combination, I think. What does Dan Brawley do on a day off? Well, I've, I've started surfing recently, about a year and a half ago. And so um, I've go, I'm down there just about every day right now because um, the water is so warm. and it's, um, So I've been waking up at 6 a.m. and heading down to the south end. Um, but who knows, you know? I mean, every day is a little bit different. I do also spend a lot of time walking my dog. I love exploring downtown Wilmington. Yeah. There's just – and I've been here my whole life, and I still – discover really cool things in downtown Wilmington. Is, would, would people be surprised at who you get phone calls from? Ha. Um, yeah, they might, you know. I mean, I would, I would think that with all the people that have done and, and screened movies at Kukalores and all the other places that you've been, and now with your work with the, uh, the, uh, the Film Alliance, the Film Festival Alliance, I would think that you get phone calls from some pretty impressive people. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to think so. Of course, um, they're also very eclectic. They're from really different worlds. Uh, I met with Deborah Ross recently. We're working on some economic development initiatives that I think are really exciting. Um, so, you know, a politician in Raleigh, right. a lawyer in Raleigh, who's, sure. who's, who's really busy in the economic development world. And then the next day I might talk to a filmmaker in New York like Josephine Decker, who is an award-winning, one of the most brilliant American directors working today. Um, and then right after that, I'll meet with a sophomore from UNCW who wants to be a volunteer. 
You know, so that's the sort of breadth of it, which I think is the most interesting part, is that I'm navigating between these different worlds and trying to stitch them together a little bit. You know, because the people in Raleigh need to know about the filmmakers who ought to be making films in Wilmington, right, who they're not likely to meet at cocktail parties, but they need to hear that story. So I carry those stories from one group to the other. Um, it's just about every day, like we're like sharing these stories here with you yeah. today. Um, and I love doing that. I'm, you know, I grew up listening to my grandmother tell stories, and I still have some recordings of her that I listen to every once in a while. Um, and so borrowing from, you know, two generations ago, the sort of style of telling stories. So um, I think that's probably, when I say I'm an artist, that's probably my medium really is storytelling. And the part of my job that I enjoy the most is coming into a space and telling a story that someone doesn't expect, right? Deborah Ross is in her law office in Raleigh doesn't expect to hear a story about two Argentinian yeah, that's true. Fellows on a bridge. <laughs> that's you know? true. And so those are fun. It's fun to make those connections. I appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, I, I've, I've watched Kuka Loris, again, from, from my vantage point of covering it and then having the chance to meet you at the studios a couple of years ago. It was really fun to hear you speak about it at that point in time and to see some of the things you've done now with Connect and now with branching off onto the stage and, and comedy and stuff. It really, you refuse to let Kuka Loris get stale. Well, we, I appreciate that. We're going to keep doing it, and it's going to 23 will be the best, best Kukaloris yet. Thanks for your time today, Dan. Thank you, John. Kukaloris 2017 will be here before you know it, scheduled for November 8th through the 12th in Wilmington. If you'd like to learn more about the changes planned for this year that Dan talked about earlier, or if you just want to be part of the effort to put Kukaloris on, go to kukaloris.org. And if you know someone who you think would be a good interview for an upcoming episode of the podcast, send me an email, jevans at wect.com. And if you like what you heard in this episode, please leave a review or a rating. That will help us reach out to even more potential listeners. I'm John Evans. Thanks for joining us for this episode of One on One. 